Hi everyone, how's everyone doing? Hope you're all well. Now before we kick off with this webinar, if anybody's having any sort of technical challenges in viewing this session at all, what I highly recommend is to go through the usual kind of tech checks that we all tend to go through if something doesn't work for us first time around. So if you are tuned in on a desktop or a laptop, feel free just to hit that little refresh icon on your web browser page now. Alternatively, if you are tuned in on a smartphone or a tablet device, feel free just to come out of the YouTube app and then click back on the link that you that you received for this training session. Hopefully everything should be working for you. Uh, one thing to note as well with this uh, with this training session is that uh, live captioning is available. So if you uh, if you do uh, wish and require live captioning throughout the course of this uh, session, you can actually hover your way uh, onto this YouTube video, and you will see that there is a uh, there's an icon uh, which is a uh, like a square or rectangular box uh, with the letter CC inside of them. You can click that on or off. Um, to enable or kind of disable uh, live captions throughout the course of this session. Also as well, feel free to grab yourself a pen, grab yourself a piece of paper, just so you can kind of take notes as we progress throughout the course of this session. Okay, I hope everybody's geared up for this session. So welcome to this Google Digital Garage training session, all about how you can build a CV and write a cover letter. My name is Rikesh, and I'm going to be your uh, presenter taking you through the course of this session, which is going to last for approximately 45 minutes. So I'll kick off first with a little bit about me. So I'm a trainer for Google's digital skills program, Google Digital Garage, as well as that I'm also a digital marketer. So I work with businesses to help them to create and to grow an online presence in order to attract more customers and clients to them respectively uh, through, I guess, the power of the internet. Um, so that's kind of a little bit about me. However, before I used to work in kind of the world of kind of marketing and digital marketing, um, I used to work in a different industry uh, where I was applying for different roles and positions. And that did require me to create CVs and tailor make cover letters. Um, so especially with a topic like this, we all kind of have some level of experience of creating a CV, uh, submitting our CV together with a cover letter. Uh, we might have kind of good responses. So we hear back to kind of go through to the next stage of interviews sometimes. And then sometimes we don't hear nothing. Um, I've had those experiences before, um, and I'm sure maybe some of you might be kind of, um, you know, who are tuning into this uh, training session might be kind of nodding and agreeing as well, because we all kind of have different or similar experiences. And that's what we're going to be covering in today's session about these specific uh, two types um, of um, documents, uh, which are very crucial and key in the in the primary stages of the recruitment process. So that's just a little bit about me. I'd also like to introduce to at this stage my colleague and fellow Google Digital Garage trainer, and that is Samantha. Now, Samantha is going to be our chat moderator today. So you might have noticed on the right hand side of your YouTube screen that there is a live chat box. That is your space over the course of this next hour to drop in your questions, to drop in your thoughts, um, and a combination of either myself and or Samantha will be able to kind of provide our thoughts and answers to those questions and comments that are coming in. I know some of you have already been getting involved. I did kind of drop in a, a quick kind of um, opening kind of question to you all uh, before we kind of went live, uh, which is asking you where you're all kind of tuning in from. So uh, we've got Ayush tuning in. We've got uh, Obada tuning in from Sudan. We've got uh, uh, Malaika tuning in from Pakistan. Ayush is tuning in from India. So it's great to see that we've got so many people who are tuning in. I guess that's kind of the beauty um, of kind of YouTube. You can kind of tune in from different parts of the world. I really hope that you find this training session useful. Now, this uh, training session on Build a CV and Write a Cover Letter is one of many sessions that we actually run as part of a wider Google Digital Garage uh, uh, live training session uh, offering. So if you have a look down below me where I'm pointing, you will see that there is a video description box. Contained within the video description box or within one of the paragraphs in there is a link to the Google Digital Garage website, which I'm sure um, uh, many, if not all of you, uh, would be familiar with because that is uh, the website uh, which you would have used to actually sign up for this particular training session itself as well. Um, so you can kind of check out some of the other topics that we run uh, training sessions on and just uh, all you need to do is just kind of sign up and be sure to kind of tune in on the right day and at the right time um, using the link that you receive, just similarly to how you have done it today as well. Um, another kind of fantastic resource that you'll find on the Google Digital Garage website is the online courses section. So this is, you'll see kind of a list of 
lots of different online courses that you can complete in your own time and at your own pace. And these courses are provided by Google at no charge. Um, there is a course that you'll see first that will appear called the Fundamental of Digital Marketing course. Uh, the reason why this course appears first is because it has an added bonus in that upon completion of this course, you'll actually receive a certificate from Google at no charge, recognizing that you've completed this course as well. So definitely check out all those resources. It's great to kind of either kind of learn or kind of build upon previous learnings. Um, so definitely uh, use that Google Digital Garage website. Feel free to kind of bookmark it and kind of go back to it um, from time to time as well. But let's have a look at what we're covering in this session, all about how we can build a CV and write a cover letter. So the way that we're gonna be kind of uh, structuring uh, this session is that uh, we're first of all going to be understanding what recruiters for look for in a CV document um, and also to a certain extent um, in a cover letter because CVs and cover letters as we'll kind of um, as we'll kind of um, find come the end of this session they kind of blend these two documents as much as they're separate documents they will very much kind of blend and kind of they go hand in hand with each other um, so we want to kind of understand first of all why why do recruiters and um, and employers look for these specific types of documents or what do they look for specifically in there because once we know that we can reverse engineer that and use that information to our advantage and actually put the specific types of information that recruiters and employers are looking for into these types of documents um, once we've kind of done that we're then going to be looking at how we can write a good uh, cover letter or what we identify good as a good cover letter and this is where it's um hopefully important for you to kind of have pen and paper on hand as we're going to be going through a good structure for a cover letter um so hopefully by the end of this uh this training session you will have uh you'll have kind of jotted down a good structure that you can use and mold towards any position that you're applying for in the future and then when, when once we've kind of covered having looked for a cover letter we're then going to be having a look at the document that usually kind of sits underneath a cover letter which is a cv so we're going to be looking at uh what sort of elements to uh, include what sort of information to include in, within a CV. Um, and we'll be talking about things such as kind of the length of a CV in terms of formatting um, and how much kind of detail we need to kind of go into with certain key types of information in there as well. So let's actually have a look and kick off at looking at uh, what recruiters are actively looking for in a CV. Before we do that, I want to show you this statistic which can seem quite sort of staggering the first time that you actually see it, which is that the average time spent reading a CV is simply six seconds. So that's that's the average time a recruiter spends reading a CV. Now, that's not a long period of time at all. If you kind of think about um, at times when you are on maybe your smartphone or you are kind of browsing through um, articles um, and kind of um, uh, blog posts online and you're kind of skim reading things um, and just next time you're doing something like that even if you're just kind of looking at the uh, reading kind of an article of the uh, the latest sports match that you wanted to kind of catch up on and you're just reading kind of an article summarizing the game um, just kind of time yourself six seconds just kind of skim read because it's exactly what recruiters are actually doing when they're looking at CVs and applications that we are sending in. So what do we want to do? What can we do with this uh, information that we can see here on screen that uh, recruiters are only spending six seconds is that we can make sure that uh, both with our CV and also our cover letter that we are short, snappy and concise with the information that we are providing. And hopefully the information that we are providing is hopefully kind of jumping out of the page um, to the recruiter who is looking at it or hopefully jumping out of the screen if, if, if they've not exactly printed the uh, CV or cover letter itself as well. So that's very important. Always keep this in mind whenever you are jotting anything down um, on a CV or a cover letter document. Now, let's actually have a look at some recruitment trends uh, in the UK. So, so um, in terms of recruitment in 2020, there's been kind of a significant kind of shift towards um, cultural fit. So a cultural fit is very important from an organization point of view, but also from an employee's point of view or prospective employee's point of view. So and this is something which, if we think about it, does make natural sense in that when a, when an organization wants to hire an employee, they want to make sure that they uh, are hiring an individual 
who is going to um, fit in with the, the the culture. And what I mean by culture, a lot of the times it means kind of the values. What what does that organization stand for? How do they kind of operate? What's their kind of their day to day running of the organization? And would this individual kind of slot in nicely to that? Um, because they don't as an organization, they don't necessarily want to be spending hours upon hours upon hours in terms of training somebody who maybe isn't such a natural cultural fit to an organization and similarly with an employee um, if an employee feels that um, they go uh, hand in hand with the cultural fit of an organization they'll settle in quicker they'll be more productive quicker as well so this is something which um, comes from kind of a two uh, kind of a, a two-sided angle as well and this is something which is um, which has been very much um, kind of at the forefront of attention when it comes to the recruitment process um, of late as well. Uh, you can see here that recruitment is becoming more automated as well and I'll speak a little bit more about that coming up shortly as well uh, about kind of automation and how that kind of works within the recruitment post process these days. You can see here diversity and inclusion as well. So this is kind of another trend um, and it's something which um, organisations have kind of taken with more kind of importance uh, and have adopted um, diversity and inclusion programmes. Um, and this kind of comes straight from kind of the beginning um, uh, or kind of the, the start of um, kind of um, any kind of process, which includes things such as kind of the hiring and recruitment process as well. Um, so organisations now understand the importance um, of and, and kind of the value of uh, having uh, a diverse team um, and are now kind of making a conscious kind of shift uh, towards ensuring um, that their hiring processes um, allow for their teams to be inclusive uh, going forward as well. And you can also see data driven as well. So you might be wondering, well, what is data driven? That's where, um, especially when it comes to the recruitment process these days, um, having a look at kind of pure data, pure numbers, pure facts, um, helps kind of organizations to kind of make um decisions and make judgments based upon specific numbers, based upon specific facts. And what that does from recruiters point of view and organizations point of view is that it takes away um, any sort of potential biases or any potential kind of discrimination or potential discrimination because recruiters and employers are now shifting more towards just looking at kind of hard numbers. Um, as opposed to um, kind of looking at maybe characteristics of an individual as well. So these are just kind of some of the uh, some of the recruitment trends that are in um, existence in the UK currently, just to kind of be aware of kind of the holistic landscape and picture of uh, the recruitment process as it stands today. Um, so you can see here, what do recruiters look for in an application? When I say application, um, application seems such as kind of a buzzword, especially in kind of the world of kind of careers and um, finding jobs, right? So an application, essentially, the way that I kind of look at it is that it's a combination of a CV and a cover letter. Um, and that's what we're going to be covering in terms of the two documents coming up shortly as well. Um, now, you can see here, what do they look for in application? First of all, clear strengths. Um, so you want to be able to kind of showcase what are you good at? What's so what's so great about you that um, recruiters and employers want to hire you? What can you offer? Uh, what's your kind of your value proposition, essentially, um, as well? We'll, spe we'll be speaking a little bit more about strengths when we get to um, when we get to kind of the um, when we get to talking about CVs a little bit later on as well. Um, metrics of success as well. So metrics of success, this kind of um, goes uh, hand in hand with what we were just talking about a minute ago, which is all about um, recruiters kind of going down, um, kind of going more down the process of being data driven um, as opposed to kind of just looking at individuals. Um, so in terms of kind of metrics of success, um, rather than kind of saying in, um, in your time um, as a manager, you increase sales. That's quite sort of a general kind of sentence. But instead of that, as a as a candidate, what you could say is that um, um, I increased sales by 20 percent in uh, quarter one and quarter two of 2022, uh, which saw an increase in revenue by 30 percent in my time as manager working at this particular place, whatever your previous work experience was. So with that second sentence that I just mentioned there, I had percentages. 
there was more specifics in there. I mentioned kind of different quarters as well. That shows a lot of kind of information. That shows a lot of more kind of information, more tangible information, more kind of metrics of success than just having kind of a simple statement such as um, I increase sales in my time as manager, which is just quite sort of vague as well. So that's something to kind of keep in mind as well. Um, customization for the job role is very important. And this is something that I'll probably reinforce throughout the course of this uh, training session is that no, C no two CVs or cover letters should ever be the same. It's very important to make sure that you tailor make each uh, individual job application to each individual job vacancy that you are applying for. Um, and we'll kind of have a look at that in both time, in terms of kind of CVs and cover, cover letter documents in terms of how we can look to kind of tailor make these every, each and every single time. Um, you also wanna make sure that you are following instructions very important factor. This is something very much uh, that recruiters are looking for in an application. And this is something which you might just think, oh, it's pretty much a prerequisite. It's just like, um, it, it's not really something that we have to talk about it, but it is something that we do have to talk about in that um, there will be specific candidates, even though uh, the job application states, please email a cover letter and a CV to this specific email address. They might be individuals who might just send it to a generic email address or they might actually stick it in the post. And that's not following instructions. So we wanna make sure that we read through the job description, the whole vacancy with a fine tooth comb, make sure that we have clear instructions on how to send in our application as well. And that is demonstrating um, that we are, as an individual, are uh, have the ability to follow instructions because we've just demonstrated that right now uh, with the way that we have submitted our application as well. And also um, something which we want to include um, in a CV and a cover letter is we want to showcase that we have adaptability and agility. Um, now, the reason why these kind of two phrases um, are very important, especially in the world of work these days, is because organizations these days are looking to future-proof their teams. So the, the world of kind of work, the world of business these days can sort of flip and change. Um, but organizations, what they'd ideally love to do is still keep the people that they've hired. And hopefully those people that they've hired, maybe they can adapt to a slightly different role. Maybe they can um, maybe they can kind of adapt to a slightly different task that they have to include as part of their workflow as well. So they want to kind of be hiring individuals that have that kind of level of kind of adaptability, flexibility and agility uh, going forward as well. So we want to make sure that first of all, that we can we can do that. And then we want to make sure that we can kind of get that across on paper as well. Now, when it comes to kind of the automation of recruitment, this is something that I touched upon earlier on. Um, automation plays a huge part nowadays within kind of the recruitment process. Um, and it's something that is uh, being used more and more. If we have a look at kind of uh, job boards these days, there's lots of kind of job boards. If you think about the likes of kind of LinkedIn, you've got um, Indeed, you've got Job Market. There's loads of different kind of websites and platforms, uh, which is kind of like a hosting ground where um, individuals who are looking to get jobs come to, and then you've got employers and recruiters who are looking to uh, hire. They come to kind of meet together. So uh, job boards are essentially kind of the platforms um, and a lot of these job uh, job board platforms require you to kind of upload a CV, upload a uh, cover letter, but it might be kind of more in a generic form because you're not necessarily applying for a specific job, but you can tailor make and tailor uh, kind of make it a bit more kind of specific as and when you're applying for certain applications. But with these job boards, a lot of the time they will actually kind of just have a quick scan of your CV, have a quick scan of your cover letter, maybe um, off the back of that, maybe kind of uh, send you email alerts, for example, of certain jobs that they think might be useful for your role as well. So that's one level of automation. Now you've also got recruitment software out there as well, um, which is kind of a little bit more kind of advanced, whereby it kind of adds an extra layer of kind of the recruitment process in that uh, software these days is so advanced that it can actually screen CVs and screen even cover letters as well for specific types of kind of words or specific types of phrases uh, which a recruiter or employer actively wants to look for in uh, a CV or cover letter without them having to do all the reading as well. 
because if they have a look at certain words and phrases that people have used and they've used them in a CV document and some of these words and phrases are also used in the job description by the recruiter who placed the advert, that might be something to think, oh, yes, this candidate's actually looked at the job description thoroughly and actually included some of those words. So that kind of makes their life a little bit easier as well. So that's just something to be aware of about kind of these automation tools that are available out there as well. Now, one of the job boards that is available is the Google Jobs boards, uh, job boards. Uh, so you can see that uh, uh, with a screenshot here on uh, on here. Uh, so you can search for any type of job, really. So graphic designer jobs in London. You can kind of filter by location, date posted type as well. But if there's no if there's not exactly a job that you are looking for within kind of your parameters, you can actually set up job alerts. Uh, which you can be kind of emailed on a daily, weekly, um, or kind of on an instant basis as well. Um, you've also got other uh, job board kind of platforms. You've got uh, the likes of Read, uh, based in the UK, and you've also got LinkedIn, which uh, also doubles as kind of a social media platform as well. And for me personally, I can't recommend LinkedIn enough. I actually got headhunted for a position a number of years ago just by... Um, just by merely having a LinkedIn profile, which I set up for free, didn't cost me a penny. And somebody came across, had a look at my profile, then sent me a message uh, asking me to come in for a conversation. Uh, that conversation, um, even though it was quite informal, turned out to be an interview. And that kind of led, led to me being offered a position. And that kind of gave me a really great feeling because I've never been kind of head on to the past. It's usually me uh, reaching out with my CV, my cover letter for jobs that kind of uh, kind of come through kind of vacancies posted as well. Um, so there's definitely a lot of places to kind of look for positions. So that's kind of what, what we're kind of talking about in terms of what are recruiters actively looking for and few things to be kind of aware about um, when it comes to the recruitment process. So uh, let's actually move on now to actually having a look at writing a cover letter. Um, so in terms of a cover letter, why is it important? Because there's a lot of kind of job applications, well, job descriptions rather than vacancies, where you'll see uh, recruiters or employers where they will say, uh, please send a CV to and then give an email address or give an address. Um, but, then, but then you're not sure, do I need to send a cover letter? Do I not? Um, that goes in line as well with can you follow instructions? So shall I just send a CV? There's a lot of kind of things that kind of go in and play in our mind. Um, now, my th my thinking nowadays has always been if in doubt, send a cover letter, even and that kind of for me even kind of bypasses the rule of following their uh, their instructions to the T as well. And the reason for that, the reason why I kind of follow this kind of rule now of sending a cover letter together with CV is because of these figures that you can see here on screen. <clears throat> So 40% of recruiters say that they uh, that they actively look for cover letters on applications and CVs with a cover letter are 53% more likely to receive an interview than those without a cover letter. So that's very important to note just with these statistics alone, um, because it allows us to kind of provide a little bit more context with our cover letter, which our CV doesn't necessarily allow us to do. And we'll speak about CVs coming up shortly because the structure is a little bit more kind of, I guess, a bit more rigid um, than with a cover letter. We could be a little bit more kind of explanatory. Um, now, a few things to remember with cover letters is that we want to make sure that we're concise with it. Uh, a cover letter is just that. Um, it's just a short letter, just kind of summarizing what somebody is about to read when it comes to the uh, when it comes to your CV, so typically, if if a CV and cover letter was printed out, you'd have your your cover letter on top, and then underneath you'd have your CV uh, document itself. So it's just kind of a bit of a precursor, saying right, this is what you're going to be reading in my uh, in my CV document as well. You want to get across in your uh, in your cover letter that you're goal orientated, you're ambitious um, as a as a candidate, you are a relevant candidate, so somebody who genuinely actually has a chance of getting this position you've got whatever kind of necessary skills and or experience for the role as well so that you are a relevant contender um, and you want to get across that you're authentic and honest as well so this is essentially what we've kind of kind of created as kind of like a, a, a structure for creating a cover letter so you can see it's made up of kind of five points um, the first and fifth point are very much kind of the 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 beginning and endings of the cover letter. So you've got an introduction, then you've got your final kind of sign off. And then you've got two, three and four are kind of the main kind of paragraphs here. So let's actually work our way in order of these here. So start with the introduction. 
Uh, so with an introduction, we're going to be going through an example cover letter because I really hope uh, I really I'm really sure that this kind of it provides a good kind of context because sometimes when we talk about oh this is a good structure well how let's kind of use this structure with an example cover letter so uh, let's kick off here with dear Mrs Webb so you've got a nice greeting of dear it's very uh, it's very classic it, it's something which is very much kind of universally accepted as well rather than using hi or hello which is quite sort of informal and you've also got the name of the person, so Mrs. Webb here. So we are uh, we are maybe going to be assuming here that this is the hiring manager. So where possible, try and find out the name of the hiring manager, the person who on the other end of the screen or whoever's going to be reading your CV and cover letter um, is kind of basically in charge. Somebody who's going to be the person who's going to be sifting through these documents as well. A lot of the times, the name of this person will already be on the app, uh, on, on the job vacancy itself as well. We then kind of go into our introductory paragraph. So I'm, uh, I'm a customer assistant currently employed by Smart. So who you are, what you do currently. I'd like to apply for the sales advisor role at ThreadOn. So you're saying, right, this is the role I'm applying for. Now, the, the reason why this is important is because um, a lot of the times recruiters are not only hiring for one role within the same organization. So we want to make sure we get put onto the right pile. Our application gets put onto the correct pile. So that sentence is very, very crucial to include in there. Um, you can also see this other sentence, which isn't necessarily crucial um from uh, the same kind of um the same kind of level as the previous sentence um but it's very important um more so from a recruiter or an employer's point of view so heard about the jobs through seeing the position advertised on jobmarket.com that makes no difference to us whether we say, say that or not but what that does for an employer recruiter is that it gives them kind of good ideas and good pointers on oh yeah, I've, I've had a couple of candidates who have come through through the uh, through the position advertised on jobmarket.com, which actually helps them to actually uh, understand, right, oh, yeah, maybe we can kind of uh, place more adverts on jobmarket.com or maybe uh, place more adverts on LinkedIn. So it helps them uh, going forward when they are kind of recruiting as well. And so from you, it kind of just kind of gives a little bit of goodwill as well off the back of that. So that's kind of a short introductory paragraph there. We then move into our first proper paragraph, essentially, where we showcase our relevant experience. So my experience as a retail assistant at Jones & Sons has prepared me to meet the demands of this exciting role. So you're saying straight from the outset, I've worked as a retail assistant. So sales advisor role, great, because that's exactly what I've been doing. And I'm, and this is my previous role um, as a retail assistant has uh, prepared me for this exciting role, you're showing that you're motivated. Uh, you're showing that you are ambitious. You really want this position uh, that you're applying for. There I excelled, uh, you can see here, it, rather than there I excelled, it says there I was excelled. So that's kind of a typo. So it's very important to kind of be aware of spelling and grammatical errors here as well. Uh, something I'll mention shortly um, as well at the end of this structure. Uh, there I excelled at customer service as and was a, uh, awarded employee of the month three times in my first year. Again, you're kind of really saying, right, yeah, I'm really good. Uh, and you're saying this without kind of being really egotistical about it. You're just kind of backing it up. I'm good. Uh, and I've got these skill set and I've been rewarded for this as well. And then this actually leads into your kind of your, your value kind of leads into further. You, you're kind of um, it's just an extra paragraph that's kind of demonstrating that you are definitely a good candidate for this position as well. So my training from the London Sales Forum uh, equipped me with the knowledge uh, uh, needed for the role as sales advisor. So you're dropping in London Sales Forum as well. Um, I would also bring my professionalism, diplomacy and enthusiasm to the position. So these three words, professionalism, diplomacy and enthusiasm, have actually been lifted from the job vacancy itself or the job description specifically that's where these words were picked up from as well so that's something to consider especially in line with kind of the automated um kind of software that are available in recruitment processes these days as well we then want to include this is kind of like an optional paragraph but we only want to include achievements or awards that are relevant to the position that we're applying for so uh, for example with this one you can see in 2021 i was awarded top salesperson which is actually relevant to the sales advisor role as I put out 
outperform my peers by 20%. I accomplish this by being self-motivated, target-driven. Again, it's really nice kind of keywords, buzzwords there as well. Some might be actually in the job description uh, that they looked at. I was also awarded the Best Pitch Award by the Leeds School of Sales. So you also mentioned other institutions uh, which might be quite sort of pre prestigious in kind of the sales roles uh, or kind of the sales world, world in general as well. And then you've got your sign off, which is I'm honored to be considered for this position. I look forward to hearing from you and please let me know if you'd like any more information about me. So you're being polite, you're being courteous um, and you're kind of reaching out saying if you've got any further questions, let me know essentially. And then you end it with many thanks, kind regards, you're sincerely, however you wish to just be kind of kind and courteous at the end and then just sign off with your name, be personable um, as well. So some top tips for your cover letter is keep it to one page. Um, so the general kind of consensus with a uh, with uh, the length of a cover letter should be no more than one side of A4 piece of paper. Um, and this should also include, remember, at the top right of the page, um, uh, usually at the top right, I believe, uh, or it can be top left, um, it, is uh, you should have the address of the organization who you are essentially sending that letter to, even if it's going to be sent by email as well. So account for that kind of extra space on the page as well. Um, just use words, uh, use some words and phrases in the job description, sprinkle them in between uh, elements of your cover letter, as we saw with the, uh, with the uh, example that we use with that structure and check your spelling and grammar. There's some fantastic tools out there, uh, and maybe even get somebody to have kind of a glance um, over your cover letter before you even hit send. Uh, it's always nice to kind of get a fresh pair of eyes looking at it as well. Uh, there's tools out there such as the likes of Grammarly that can help as well. So that's kind of a cover letter. Let's actually now have a look at your CV document. So the document that's going to be essentially underneath your cover letter itself. So what sort of uh, elements kind of make up a CV? So these are kind of the main five elements that we identify um, that essentially should make up a CV document. So uh, basic information, opening summary, work experience, education achievements and skills and strengths. So with basic information, uh, it should be our name, uh, address or location, especially um, if, if we are able to get to different locations, we can just mention which areas we cover. Uh, if we're only able to kind of cover our kind of local area, then we can just um, mention our address so that's going to be uh, a judgment call on your end with the cv uh, when mentioning this on your cv contact information so uh, the best number to contact you on uh, same uh, same goes with email address and other important information as well um opening summary so this is kind of like a, a little bit of kind of like a precursor to uh, to say right this is what you're going to read in my cv document now you've already mentioned quite a lot of information maybe in your cover letter and then this is just uh, a short two or three sentences. This is the only time within a CV document that you should really be writing in sentences. Everything else should be essentially in bullet point form. Uh, so opening summary is the only time that we want to write two or three sentences, which briefly describes ourselves um, and uh, our motivation for the specific position that we are applying for. Why do we want this role? Um, essentially, it works like an elevator pitch, which um, I'm sure many of you have heard of an elevator pitch before. This is essentially where you have maybe like a quick 30 seconds, a quick one minute to summarize who you are, what you're about um, and what you can do for others. Um, and that's essentially what a, an opening summary should be. You could even include, as you can see here, an interesting fact to showcase and show off your personality as well. If it's appropriate uh, to the position and relevant to the position that you're applying for as well. We've then got work experience. We want to kind of make sure that we include our work experience with the most recent work experience at the top and kind of highlight um, key projects and results that we uh, and that, that we kind of worked on. So when I say key projects, so these are kind of tasks that we did, which we feel that we've got transferable skills or we built transferable skills from which will carry on to the position that we're applying for as well. You can include voluntary work experience here as well. Uh, with any kind of work experience that we're noticing down here, make sure you add in kind of company name, uh, the job title that we had, the dates. We don't need to get too specific with the dates, uh, just kind of as long as we mention kind of the month and the year perhaps as well. That's the main, uh, the main thing that we can include here as well. Education achievements as well. Uh, similar to work experience, put the most recent at the top, mention your academic qualifications, which institution that you got them from. Uh, and again, mention key projects and research that you worked upon um, as well. I think it's very important to kind of ev at every point, try and relate any type of education, any type of work experience 
to the role that you're applying for. Even if it's just something, a case of transferable skills that you built up from a key project that you worked on uh, during a volunteering experience that you did perhaps as well. You then got skills and strengths. So skills and strength is something which employers and recruiters are actively looking for in a CV document, which actually flies in the face of initial preconceptions that people might have or might have had with CV documents, which might just think, oh, a CV just is a summary of your work experience and that's it. Maybe your, your studies, that's it. No, nowadays, uh, employers and recruiters are actively looking to learn more about you as a candidate. So as well as uh, working experience, as well as education experience, they also want to know your strengths and skills. So what qualities will people describe you as having? What soft and technical skills do you have? And how do these skills and strengths relate to the position that you're applying for as well? So let's actually take uh, skills first of all and actually break them down into soft skills, hard skills. And we've kind of um, siphoned off here hard skills into another segment, which is digital skills. Now, the reason for that is because Digital skills is something which is a very much kind of a valuable commodity these days because most kind of uh, industries nowadays do include a lot of kind of um, elements that work with kind of technology um, and kind of the digital side um, of um, different tasks as well. So it's important to kind of ensure that we are kind of noting down digital skills as well. Now, in terms of soft skills, these are kind of interpersonal traits uh, such as leadership, teamwork, communication, and these are kind of qualities which we've kind of picked up over time, whether it be through our career or whether it be through our academic studies, whether it be through our personal life as well. And these are qualities that employers and recruiters are actively looking for as well. We've then got hard skills. So these are skills which uh, people have either studied to gain uh, specific skills, uh, specific hard skills uh, through academic study or they have uh, they have acquired through uh, through doing and kind of experience off the back of doing as well. So accounting, someone might have gone to university maybe to learn accounting. Uh, speaking another language, someone might have picked it up through uh, speaking multiple languages in, in, in the family home perhaps as well. And then you've got digital skills. So these are things such as maybe coding, video editing, social media as well. So in terms of some skills to include in your CV, you can see kind of um, examples of both kind of soft skills and technical skills. With technical skills, this is kind of an amalgamation of both the hard skills and digital skills, which we've kind of just put together here. Uh, but even kind of things such as kind of soft skills, you can see here, networking, very important factor for a lot of organizations uh, to maybe go out and get maybe new business perhaps as well. Communication, very important to um, have good communication skills to kind of relay information to other members of your teams as well uh, that you might be working within as uh, as well going forward. So that's kind of skills. Now, you've also got strengths as well. Um, now, when it comes to strengths, we we want to be answering questions such as these. So what am I good at? What do I like doing? And what makes me stand out? What And what when I say what does what makes me stand out, what what makes me stand out from other prospective candidates for this job role now a lot of these questions it, it can be quite a challenge to actually go uh, and kind of self-reflect upon a lot of these so a really great way to actually self-reflect upon uh, what uh, what our strengths are and kind of answer these questions is to get somebody who knows you well so maybe kind of a family friend um, or maybe kind of a neighbor just somebody who's known you for a long period of time not you've known for a long period of time, but they've known you for a long period of time. So they've got to know your character, your nature, and they will be kind of more of a judge on what we're good at. What do we like doing? What makes us stand out? Um, and hopefully we'll kind of find a, a, a sense of kind of commonality and trend in terms of what what are we actually good at? What do we like doing? What makes us stand out? Because that will essentially be our strengths, um, which we can then highlight within our CV document as well. So some example strengths here. Uh, include enthusiastic, uh, adaptable, self-motivated, caring. But with all of these, it's all good and well writing these down in our CV. However, we want to make sure that we are backing these up with an example from maybe our voluntary, uh, volunteering experience or if we don't necessarily have too much working experience at all, volunteering experience at all, uh, reflect back on our time when we worked in groups uh, or in teams um during our academic studies perhaps as well so you can kind of highlight that you are solution focused but then maybe back that up with an example as well 
So as well as strengths and skills, we also want to highlight within our CV experience as well. So there's different types of experience that we can kind of um, we can kind of use, and there's lots of different types of experience um, uh, that you can see here on screen. So paid work experience, hobbies and extracurricular activities, internships, volunteering, etc. As well. So we want to kind of basically just use as many of these and think oh, where where have some of these even things like hobbies and interests. Where have some of them? Kind of helped to actually translate into certain levels of experience and certain skills that I've looked to kind of develop over time as well. And with any experience that we're looking to kind of jot down within our CV, we want to answer these three questions or we'll have the ability to answer these three questions and just in bullet points as well. Uh, what do we do? What do we achieve out of that specific task or role within our previous job or previous kind of volunteering experience? And how does this task relate to the specific role that I'm applying for today that I sat down to type up my CV for uh, perhaps as well. So it's important at every opportunity to relay everything back to that one specific role that you are applying for. And that kind of goes in line with what I mentioned towards the beginning of this webinar session of uh, making sure that no CV and cover letter should be the same. You it's important to tailor make it to each individual, um, each individual job vacancy that you are applying for as well. Now in terms of the formatting of a CV uh, document, um, in terms of the length of a CV, uh, the general kind of accepted uh, length, especially in the UK, is no more than two sides of A4 piece of paper. Now, there are times certain kind of industries where it can be longer, uh, but generally no more than two sides of A4 piece of paper. You can see these kind of building blocks here. Uh, and the only kind of constants in these building blocks are contact details, which should always be at the top because it's easy to read. Remember the uh, the average um, the average reading time of a, C, uh, of a CV uh, by recruiters is only six seconds. Um, so contact details have them kind of front and center, just in the first thing they see on the page. Um, and then opening summary which is just summarizing, right, this is what you're about to read. Now, experience, key skills, education, you can kind of mold and kind of adapt things around. So if you have a lot of education, but not as much experience, leave with the education. Uh, and similarly, vice versa, if you've got a lot of working experience, but not as much academic experience, uh, education, then lead with your working experience as well. Um, and then you can see here, that's um, something that's kind of bookended this, uh, these uh, these kind of CV building blocks here is references as well. So that's an important section to add into a CV document as well. Now, what I tend to find my kind of experience, I'm sure that Samantha will kind of uh, might sort of agree with this as well, um, is that when you get down to kind of the references section, you're already kind of struggling for space on the second page, uh, second A4 piece of paper here. Um, so when it comes to references, I'll put in, I'll, I'll write the, head, the heading of references, and then underneath, I'll write a very short um, kind of sentence. And this is the only other, I guess, exception for writing a sentence. And I'll just write in available upon request or references available upon request here as well, because I'm running out of space. And if the human resource department do request for um, um, reference details, then I can always send that in a different document uh, in, on a separate uh, on a separate document uh, when requested going forward as well. Um, so it's important to kind of be uh, be mindful of kind of formatting with our CV. Now, this is kind of a good example of a CV. Um, now, ignore to ignore kind of the photo aspect because certain industries um, is kind of accepted that you send kind of a photo or kind of like a, a profile photo along with your with your CV. But other industries not uh, it's not really required. I found it more kind of more so um, in kind of creative industry that it's kind of. Um, used uh, where, where candidates do send in photos. Uh, but the main thing here with this example is that you can see this clear font, neutral professional colors as well. You've got uh, you've got black text on a white background predominantly here as well. Everything is compartmentalized, so experience, certification, expertise as well. It's relevant experience. And if you compare that to this example, you've got kind of uh, red text on a yellow background and white text on a blue background, the spelling errors here, so experience. Um, you've got um, non-relevant uh, working experience here, so mentioning about kind of dog groomer uh, as well. There's too many colors going on here as well. So these are just kind of 
um, kind of good examples and bad examples um, just to kind of reflect upon here as well. Now, you can sort of set yourself up for success by using CV templates. There's some fantastic uh, resources here. So Google Docs, Canva and Jobseeker that can um, um, kind of assist with, um, with CV templates, which you can then mold into your own going forward as well. So with CVs, write in a clear and concise manner. Remember, bullet points um, are the way to go, apart from the opening summary, maybe that reference section. Um, use CV template tools, as I mentioned, like Google Docs um, and Canva and uh, and, and job seeker as well and tailor your CV for each application something I've been mentioning throughout the course of this session so let's have a um, round up and see if there's any questions uh, which I can't see any so uh, I really hope that you found uh, this um, this training session useful um, be sure to kind of check out the Google Digital Garage website uh, for more information and sign up for more training sessions as well. Remember to check out the online courses section as well. Remember this fundamental digital marketing course, which is the course that upon completion as an added bonus, you'll receive a certificate at no charge, uh, recognizing that you completed that course from Google as well. So apart from that, I want to say massive thank you to Samantha. I'm sure agree has been a wonderful uh, chat moderator. And thank you all for tuning into this Google Digital Garage training session. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you. Goodbye.